on my environment here, we have uh, Symfony running in its latest version. I do have um, Atlas and Jira running it's on that end, and I'm connected. Um, I'm connected to the TIZ development environment. Um, Symfony itself has a browser-based uh, interface uh, for all the configuration that is needed. So. Um, the components that I have installed is the TC adapter itself, uh, Jira adapter, uh, both of which are responsible to um, establish the technical connection to TC or to Jira. Um, the other component that I have installed is the process template, the basic process template that is kind of a collection of all the best practices that we have collected in the past 10 years. So it contains a lot of the flows and, and decision making and, 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 and patterns that you would use for synchronizations. And then uh, we have a process installed for TAZ to JIRA. That's just a very small piece of configuration that um, that does the that does the uh, TZ to JIRA connection itself. Um, those pieces usually are just uh, just um, just very small um, very small um, adjustments to the individual uh, tool uh, tool uh, tool setup. Um, all of that together um, is is what um, what is installed in Symfony. So for the uh, adapter, we do have. Um, con different configurations in the background. I'll just jump into Jira maybe quickly. Um, so what we see here is the list of configuration sets that is pretty much like aliases for different environments. So with an adapter, you can uh, connect to as many Jira servers as you want. I have created a connection to my local Jira. And then there's usually a couple of required um, parameters that we have to specify, like where's Jira running and which user I'm going to use to. Um, of course, these configuration options are specific to, um, are specific to uh, uh, each adapter. So like for the TC, it looks a little bit different. I'll like, it's a little different, like also in URL and stuff like that. And uh, so both adapters will allow us to connect to, to a number of um, environments in the background. Um, the same kind of concept we do have available for the process itself. So I'll just bring up the um, configuration for the process. I've created a configuration set demo. That is my demonstration project. In a real world, you would just see uh, a list of all your different projects that you're synchronizing with BMW here. Um, inside uh, the process configuration, what we see is, um, first of all, um, a parameter to decide which uh, JIRA we want to use, then a parameter that decides which TZ we're going to use. So we bring together my local JIRA with the development TZ. Um, the other thing that we have to, to uh, adjust here is uh, what project in JIRA we want to use and uh, also what uh, issue type in JIRA we will use. Um, and then uh, we do have three different mapping scenarios. Um, so that covers the case in which there's a new um, business scenario one item coming from BMW, so that means uh, BMW has detected a problem and reports it. Um, a mapping scenario in which uh, there was an update from BMW on such a, such a ticket. And then finally also a mapping for the scenario in which um, we are doing updates against the BS2 ticket. Those are tickets that we basically report back to BMW. Um, so that is um, more or less the configuration uh, for the integration itself. Um, inside the mappings, uh, we take a look at my scenario. It's pretty, it's pretty basic. I have decided to just synchronize the title from BMW with the summary in Jira, the error description with the description, and just like that, I could just bring up any kind. So this is the list of the BMW attributes, um, and I could then map them onto the JIRA attributes, of course, depending on the individual configuration of the tool in the background. So that's what I do in the mapping module. Um, the final 
thing that is required um, in Symfony is what we call the scheduling. So I just set up one schedule here for my demo project. So um, it's run type setup um, where we can decide um, at what particular time of the day or on which days or how frequently um, the uh, process is running. So it's a pretty powerful configuration. I have just selected it to run every day at 10.15. And, um, and uh, of course, um, the processes could be also triggered from here if you want to, if you want to manually have a process running. Um, the system itself also has what we call a diagnose page. Um, this is kind of a live view of what's going on in the Symfony platform itself. So what we're seeing here, the process is running right now. I just started it before, right before the, before the webinar started uh, because we have a couple of new tickets from BMW. They all need to be synchronized. So I'm using the chance here. And what you can see is part of the Symphony transaction mechanism. So usually desynchronization runs in two different phases. First phase is what we call the scoping. So it would just go back in that case to BMW and and um, and load the list of, of tickets that have been not modified or, or newly created. And then Symphony just walks down that list. Um, this is what we call then the executes and then notifies the administrator about the progress and where we are. So you can see right now there's this succeeded, um, the succeeded counter is, is increasing. Um, at the time we speak, um, of course, the data is upgraded here in, uh, in JIRA. So we are now at item 573. I just refresh for a minute and then we see okay, that's now 570 and so on. Uh, of course, synchronization also addresses um, all aspects like, for example, attachments. Um, here in that case, those are the, uh, the automatically uh, created test tickets on the BMW uh, development environment. So that's why they have kind of this cryptic um, subject. So that's uh, pretty much everything um, from, the, from the very basics of how Symfony works. Um, there is a uh, reporting module in the background. So this reporting module is there to just uh, collect the, uh, the errors. So we see some statistics in here. And would there be errors in the synchronization? They would show up in the reporting so that we can directly have a, we have a directly, we have a list of problems to be uh, resolved. Um, the rest of the, um, the rest of the interface, um, is then is then also pretty much for diagnose reasons. So if I jump to the system diagnose, this is kind of a landing page on which uh, I can check the health um, of the system itself. So it would, on a regular basis, try to check the connections to all the configured uh, systems and and servers. So if I would uh, if I would see some problem in here, um, let me just jump here again. If I would see some problems here. Uh, coming up uh, with connections, you would see uh, you would see it here right away. Um, those kind of health information can, of course, also be integrated with typical monitoring uh, monitoring tools. Um, so that's pretty much um, pretty much everything um, that is required for a Symfony setup, and that's how the synchronization basically works.